What is going on? Bo leaving with Feels Like Home Construction. We're back again with the grumpy camera woman, Kendall Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, she's not harder. So we uh, harder in crime. But what we're doing today is we're running a white fur tongue and groove. So everybody calls us and they want to run shiplap. So I'm sure you've seen it on Magnolia, all those things. Well, we're going to show you how to do that shiplap on your wall if you don't want to pay for somebody to come out and do it. And if not, you can of course call us and we'll take care of it for you. But, so what we did is our first piece, all we did was find the measurement for the length of the wall. So pretty simple, right? You your pencil, your measuring tape, and we ran it all the way down. We had a 167 inch wall right here to the end. So my first piece, I always give a little bit of a leeway room. So what I do is I find the measurement to the ceiling, which is an eight foot ceiling, so I made it 96 inches. So if you're here with me, it's 96 inches to the ceiling. I found the width of this actual tongue and groove, and I don't go off the actual tongue part or the groove part. I go off just the, the inside of it, which is five inches. Okay. okay, so you find your measurement, it's five inches. So it was 96 inch wall up, correct? So I divide that by five, and it came out to whatever it was 17 or whatever I had before. So I know, okay, I can fit you know 17 pieces here. So what I did is I got my first piece on that bottom all the way across, got it measured, got it cut, and I got a level. I got one inch shot in, and I went to the middle, and I leveled it. Went down there, and I leveled it, and got that first piece level because it's a groove all the way up. And so really, after I do that, it's really just stackable until you start getting outlets and things, but you just stack it all the way up, and it'll get you, it'll stay straight across. And we buy 16-foot pieces because it's a 14-foot wall, so we don't have to mess with running seams or doing anything like that. So I'll show you the next step once we get to cutting out outlets and kind of going from there. Okay, so I got this next piece on. We're about to run into the window and then the outlets. So I'm gonna kind of show you, sorry, it's gonna be a, maybe a little wobbly. But I went ahead and got it down in that, that groove. And you can see that it, it's already all where it's supposed to be. I'm not gonna cut out anything for the window yet. So I'll show you how to do that later on, but I gotta push down where it's supposed to be at. See so what I do, I'm finding these outlets, and I'm going right to the edge of these outlets. I'm gonna go ahead and mark all these all the way down. As you can see, I'm just going right to the edge of that box. Not too wide, but just, just enough. I'm not gonna do the windows. I'm just gonna get those cut out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find how far down it is. the top to there because that's really going to be overlapped it's two inches so I'm going to go down two more because the box is usually four inches so from right where that where it ends remember how I talked about this uh, tongue part I'm going to go to see it right where my tape's hitting I'm going to go down two inches from right there and I'm going to mark that down and get that cut out so I can slide these back on there so I just showed you where to work I'm really using the steel saw, and I just kind of want to fast cut the lane on there. And so this makes it a lot easier if you go actually turn and, and do all that. We have to do all the multi tools that we use for everything, but sometimes not many people have those. It's two, three hundred bucks for one of those, so this is like $30 that hardly is great. It works out good. So let me show you. Next. All right, so what I did again is I just got my length 
It's pretty much been the same length all the way up. Um, you know, whenever you're cutting these, you are gonna have some little little spaces on the end. Uh, so what we usually do is we run a little bitty tiny turn piece. I'll show you at the end. So don't worry about those cuts. We get it as tight as possible. But don't don't freak out at all. So all I did is I went back, put my piece back up on top. You can see the old one. I just cut the recent one. So I got that cut out. I pulled these outlets out from the wall. And then I went ahead and I marked right there. And I'm gonna measure up right where that tongue stops up to the rest of the box when I take these off. So if you pull that off down there. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna measure from here to the edge of this box and take those and get those cut out again just like I did earlier and stack it back on top. But I'm gonna go ahead and mark all those all the way down just like I did. So pretty simple. All right, so we got all the show flat brand. You can see I kind of left some of it where the windows are, so I'm gonna go back and cut that um, out. You can cut it to fit and place it over it, but I like to put it up there. Then I just get my steel saw and my multi-tool and run it around, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, you can see up here on the top, there's like a two inch gap, or an inch and a half gap. You know, if you're not running crown or anything, you wanna make sure you measure this wall right so your piece, you don't have a tiny two inch piece. Like I would have cut down this bottom piece down here about two inches off, and then that would have made me another another piece to fit right up on top where it would look like a half piece, if that makes sense. Um, she's wanting more of a offset as well. So you can see there's little lines that I'll walk you up and show you. So what we're gonna do is go through with a pencil, and I'm gonna just gonna mark lines throughout this deal. So I'll just go through randomly and do like a 16.
it's hard. So as I was talking about earlier, you can see how I, I didn't cut it all the way through, but I put a line there with a little multi-tool and I did that every so often. And so those lines that I was marking, you can see right here, will make it that staggered look like this lady's wanting. Usually we just run it all the way across. I think it looks cleaner, but this will work and give you that staggered. So. All right, so once you got all your lines marked, can I go ahead and show you how I just put them random places. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this multi-tool. I have a Dremel blade on there. And this little thing is about 200 bucks, but you'll use it everywhere, all the time. We never thought we would use this, but every day. So, so check this out. I'm not gonna cut all the way through. All I'm doing That's it right there. So now it looks like you're gonna have that staggered look, so I'll just do this all the way up, all the way through. So, pretty simple, you gotta watch out, this is an oscillating tool, so it goes back and forth, so you gotta make sure you don't keep going where it chops these edges, because then it'll, it'll look pretty bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that out, and then I'll take you to the next step, what we're gonna do. So if they are on that staggered look, this is what you can do. Um, right here you can go through and you can see all of it. Right now it's hard to see the lighting here, but we got it all done, it took us five minutes to do that. And then I'm gonna show you how I didn't cut out the rest of the part of the window, so I'm gonna get the skill saw that I showed you yesterday. And you know this out of me. And all I'm gonna do is just run it down this wall right along the edge of this window. stop before I get to the bottom so I don't go past it too far. And you don't have to worry about these cuts because remember I'm going to show you how to case this out. We're going to put one by six over this and then put our casing over the top so these cuts won't matter if they're all uneven. We walk you through the whole step process of the other stuff, getting it all installed, um, getting it cut out so you can look around those edges. See how they're kind of jaggedy but the good thing is we cover all that up so you don't have to worry about that. So now I'm gonna show you how to case out the inside of these windows. You can look. So what we're gonna do is when we measure this, we're gonna measure to the window. I'm gonna give it a little bit of leeway room. And you can see, I'm all the way to the window. I need to give it a little bit of room, so I'm gonna do four and seven eighths. So if you see that right there, that means I can bring it out because we're gonna caulk along that window. So I'm using a one by six, so I'm gonna go out here with my table saw and shave that down to a four and seven eighths, and both sides will fit it. And we'll get that shaved down and we'll show you the next spot. So I showed you just a second ago that I cut it down to four and seven eighths. As you can see, I'm doing my bottom piece of kit, or trim piece inside first, and got that done, and what I did is I leveled it as well. I got that cut. This one up top, you can see this two by four when they install these studs, it, it's at an angle so it's not completely straight. So what I did is I put it up in there and I traced it and I cut it at that angle. But the great part is, the reason why I do my top and my bottom first of these pieces is because when I put my sides on, it covers up these, these end cuts. And then when you go back to caulk them and paint them, it looks a lot better. But one big one is, like this one's really sloped, so I have a little level on me all the time. So, so what I suggest is double check your stuff and you can see Look at that level, how off that is. But it, it's good sideways, so we're level straight across, so you don't see this curvature when, you know, when you're looking at it. So what I do is I get some shims, and this one's pretty bad, so I'm gonna put the fatter part in. Actually, I'll put the fatter part. Go in with this way. And same thing over here. And whenever you're installing this, before you shoot this in, you want this to be level with not like actual level level, but with uh, your ship lap and your, your insert right here. You see how they're both touching? You don't want to have a huge gap where this is gapped right there, so when you install your casing around this, it's gonna look funky. So make sure to bring this out with that ship lap, and you're even right there with it. 
And the same thing on the other end. And if I can get this done with one hand, I will. So now I got it pretty, pretty level where I want it. And I can, I can shove this shim in a little bit more, a little bit more at an angle to get it down, to bring it down just a little bit more. And so same thing over here. Yeah, so I want it. Okay, so Phil's gonna give me the nail bit. And so now you can see I got it where I want it. I'm making sure both these are lined up right here. Now I'm gonna shoot that in where that shim is. And then I can shoot one in the corner too, just to get it held. So I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna make sure I'm lined up on the outside as well. And I'm gonna shoot that in. Perfect. So now I can go back and I can get my multi tool and I can cut these shims out of there. And then I got a level deal. So now I can measure my next two pieces down the wall. And we already know the width I showed you that was four and seven eighths. So once I got those boats installed, like I said, this is not going to be stain grade, so we're going to have a little bit of leeway room on the, the caulking part. But I'm going to go with 70 and a half right there. And when I cut that, then I can slide that in there and it'll cover up this jacked up thing. I'm going to do the other side as well and get those cut. What's up? I'm back. So what I'm going to do is show you right now. We got all these done yesterday. We showed you how to do the windows and the inside and the casing part. Now I'm going to do some casing on the outside because you can look right here. You can see all these cuts. So that's the reason why you don't have to worry about those when you're doing it. Now we're going to cover that with casing. She's going to show you this other window that we just finished. Like I said, I don't run trim every single day, but I have it down and it looks good. I'm just not that fast at it. So whenever you're running your uh, casing, you want to make sure that your cut we're going to do this 90 degree angle across here because I'm going to have a, a piece coming across right here and a piece coming across right here and I'm going to have a 90 degree angle, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I want it to be 3 16ths of an inch up mm -hmm. to be running across on this, this board and 3 16ths of an inch over on this board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this one right here. I'm just going to do it right here. And I know it's going to need to be another, because you know, I'm on top of this board down here. So I'm going to have to add 3 16ths of an inch to this number, and it's going to put me right at like 71. And I'm going to take it in here, and I'm going to cut it to the bevel wider at 71 inches. So if you hold me. So you look at my miter in here set up. Do you have the fatter end? Is the end the outside? The skinnier end is the inside. So I'm going to put the skinnier in towards me when I'm cutting this. And I'm going to go ahead and get my cut over here done for that piece. And sometimes it's tricky whenever you're doing this because your head's backwards whenever you're installing this because I got to put it up on that side so this can be my bottom over here. And I'm going to go ahead and just give me just a, a piece cut off. Love it. So. so I got my 45 cut right there. And then we talked about our measurement was uh, right at 71. So I measure it this way. There's a lot easier way to do it. This way works for me. You can find your way that works for you. And I'm going to do it right on 71. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to need to do another miter because I'm doing the miter on the window. And right there is where, so I'm going to put my saw down here so I can make sure I'm not going to go past it. And then I'm going to So you can see where it hit, how it's perfect across that line almost, or almost perfect. What I'll do is I'll go back to this wall over here. I hope this is making sense for everybody. And look, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be 3 16ths of an inch. And this is what I meant right here. See this right here, this 3 16ths of an inch, this gap from your window, and then from as well as from up top when I run my piece up top. So I'm gonna make sure it's 3 16ths of an inch up there, and then I'm gonna come down here, and it's, we're, we're over 3 16ths of an inch right there. 
So what I'll do is I'll get the nail gun. And remember, we kind of leveled these uh, casings on the inside yesterday, so we don't have to really make sure. And I'm gonna check that where I want it. Get one shot in there just so I can adjust it later in case the boards warped or anything. And I'm gonna shoot another one down here. And then I'm gonna bend this board. You can see, look how warped it is. So I'm gonna bend it back to where I want it on that 316th of an inch. Well, that didn't shoot in. All the way up till I get it where, exactly where I want it. And then now we shouldn't have that problem of it. Then I'll shoot a couple. I'll angle it on the inside just a little bit. And shoot a couple on the inside that way. So there's your first cut. And that's all you're gonna do on the other side as well. I'm gonna do that same thing on the other side. And then I'll show you in a second how to get your top and your bottom. So I shouldn't be saying to you how to get your sides cut. So what I'm gonna do over here is the top piece. And I know I showed you the first time to measure from here um, on the inside of this miter. So there's a couple of different ways you can measure. This way I'm gonna show you is I do it from the outside of that miter to the outside of this miter. And it's, this one's 20, this one's curved a little bit, so I gotta bend it in. But 27 and 5 eighths exactly on the top. So, voila, already cut. Here's a, uh, here it is. So you can see, you got the skinny end, the fat end, remember the skinny end goes in towards the window. And what I'm gonna do, set that up in there. And if you have some miter clamps, that definitely helps because if I had miter clamps, it'd be sitting pretty dang tight right there. You can see, pretty good cut. Still got my gap, my 3 16 And then this side as well, this is warped like crazy. So sometimes you're gonna have to adjust it. Sometimes it's not gonna fit exactly how you want. Probably have to shave a little bit off this one because this one's it's warping out to the side. But you can see there's my, my miters that, that will match up right there on there. So that's how you do that. Measure from outside, 27 and 5 eighths. So I got, I put my measuring tape on there, measured to here, 27 5 eighths. I did my minor cuts on it, skinny and in, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. What's going on? So we finished the shiplap wall. We walked you through how to case out the windows, um, case out the insides. It always makes it look a lot classier than just leaving it, you know, sheetrock. Uh, this wall is completely finished. You know, we did do crown up top, shoe and crown. Um, if you're a first timer, I mean, you can definitely do the crown job, but. I would recommend just running your show flap all the way up the wall and then killing it if you're not gonna run any crown because crown can be tricky sometimes for sure. It's not 90 degree. But I showed you how to do the casing, put all our base boards back on, got all these little bit of lines cut throughout here. And uh, here's your show flap wall and on the ends. We did these tiny little trim pieces to remember how we showed you um, all your cuts won't be exactly even since this sheet rock is pretty, I mean this uh, texture is pretty rough. So we just put this tiny little trim piece down and I made it look super clean because this will be painted and distressed. So once all that's done, I mean, it's gonna, it'll look like a clean, brand new wall. So I hope it helped and uh, like and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate it.